This week we are taking a look at the latest rifles to hit the market. I have the chance to shoot the new Seiko A7. The A7 is the newest offering from Seiko. Uh, they currently have on the market their Seiko 85, which is incredibly popular. And from the same company we also have Tico, which everybody knows and loves and is generally accepted as one of the best value for money rifles on the market. Uh, both Tika and Seiko inherently shoot very well, so I'm hoping that the A7 is going to be um, just the same. In terms of makeup, it feels very nice. It feels very much like the Seiko 85 synthetic stock. It has the soft touch finish to it, quite slim lines. Um, what it doesn't have is the uh, rubberized inserts where uh, the, the grips occur on the pistol grip and on the full stock here. Um, it's actually a stipple which is built into the stock, um, but I actually quite like it. I possibly even prefer it to the rubberized inserts on the 85. The receiver itself looks very similar to the 75-85 receiver. The lines are slightly different, but there's not a lot in it, to be honest. Um, what is noticeable is Anybody familiar with Seiko rifles will know that they have a, a tapered dovetail rail which you can uh, mount your scope on. With this, it is actually drilled and tapped and provided with uh, weaver style bases. Uh, so it should be cheaper to be able to mount a scope on here than on the Seiko 85. Uh, the other thing which is noticeable is as opposed to the 85 which cut away the previous rifle, the 75's face, to give you a sort of semi-controlled feed. Uh, on this A7, they've gone back to the Seiko 75, the old model bolt face, with three lugs and the classic Seiko extractor. What they have changed is that the ejector on this is the same as the Tika. It's a sprung plunger um, ejector, as opposed to the fixed ejector, which you find on the 75 and 85. So uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it's the same that you'll find on a Hauer, for example, and it works very well. The bolt release is exactly the same as you'll find on an 85 or 75, and very similar to what you find on a Tika. And the barrel, free floated and cold hammer forged, the same as all the barrels that Seiko produce. The trigger unit has been pulled straight from the 85, which in actual fact, I don't think it's been changed at all uh, since the 75. There was no need to change it. It worked very well. I've always been a massive fan of Seiko triggers. Very crisp, no creep whatsoever. Uh, it's just a very, very nice trigger unit to use. One of the nice things that they have taken from the uh, upgraded 85 model and put it into this A7 is the new magazine system in that on the 75 you just press the lever down and the magazine would eject. Possibly you could end up losing your magazine that way if you inadvertently pressed it and didn't realize and it dropped out in the field. With the 85 and the A7, you actually have to press the magazine in. You've got to depress it before um, pressing the release lever, and then the magazine will come out. Looking at the magazine itself, um, it is different to the 85. It is very, very similar to the Tika, uh, which is not such a great thing because it's all made of plastic, keeping costs down, I assume. But what they have done to improve it over the Tika is they've given it uh, metal lips, which should mean that the magazine lasts a bit longer. And it is actually noticeable that it feeds a bit nicer with these metal lips as well. So that's quite a nice thing. The trigger guard arrangement, unfortunately, is a plastic affair. Uh, it's exactly the same shape as you'll find on the 85, but they mold it out of plastic like they have the Tika. A little bit annoying, I guess, and another sort of cost-saving exercise. And the second most frustrating thing, though, is the fact that on this bolt, the bolt shroud at the back is made of the same quite um, cheap-feeling plastic material that you get on Tika. And it's one of the first things that Tika owners want to replace is this plastic bolt shroud. I've removed the action screws, so now we can separate the rifle out and this reveals exactly how the metal work is secured in terms of the recoil lug system to 
the stock. And what Seiko have done is that they've adopted the floating recoil lug that you have on the Tika. It is a system which seems to work. Tikos inherently shoot very, very well. Um, but me, for me personally, I like to see a solid recoil lug. Seiko have gone through a number of systems over the years. And if you go back to the fin Finbear and Forrester era, that was an integral uh, machine recoil lug which was part of the receiver. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, that is the best method. Um, this seems to work. I don't particularly like it, but that is what they've adopted from the Tika design. Now, Seiko rifles are very, very well known for shooting brilliantly straight out the box. And I have no doubt that this is going to produce the goods as well. From a reliability standpoint, I mean, I really do like the stock. Um, the synthetic stocks uh, last a lifetime. They are, you know, the ultimate uh, model of rifle to buy, especially if you're a professional, you're going to be out in the elements a lot. Uh, the cold hammer forged barrels last a very, very long time. The trigger unit on this is excellent. Uh, very, very smooth bolt, excellent safety catch. This rifle is going to do exactly what you want to do it despite the couple of criticisms that I have. Um, I suppose all that's left now is to see exactly how it shoots. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. Well, as I expected, Seiko A7 shoots very well. That's three shots into about, uh, I don't know, 0.75 of an inch, something like that. You can't really complain with that. Definitely a shooter.